Quick shout out by request to Taylor before we begin today. Taylor says she's a very big fan of our videos, even with the quote, bad dad jokes. Well, Taylor, I'm sure you'll be glad to know that to turn a bad joke into a dad joke, you do like Vicki Sue Robinson and turn the bee around. <laughs> Hey everybody, Josh the RV Nerd with Bish's RV, hanging out here in my Holden Town Coldwater, Michigan store with the new 20 BHHL uh, either Heritage Glen or Hemisphere Hyperlight Series, the laminated division of the Salem and Wildwood families, uh, literally the exact same RV under two different names. And this is the newest entry into the like Murphy bed, dinette, slide, bunkhouse uh, family camper here. But the thing is, sometimes it pays off to not be the first guys out there and to not exactly copy off of someone else's test. Certainly, it's very similar to some other things that you'll see uh, out there. And I'll leave you some links in the video description if you'd like to cross compare. But they went through and by not being the first ones out, they were able to kind of listen to the problems that some of the other brands had and solve those sort of floor plan things like, they, um, they didn't bury the camp kitchen under the bunks, which allowed them to flip-flop the bunks and the bathroom so it does not have that radius shower that so many people dislike. Instead, this has a very large bathroom with a nice big uh, uh, rectangular shower that uh, gives you that elbow room that you're really looking for. With the wide stance stability axles, 26 feet tip to tail on the nose and the weight rating, this should be a good fit for half ton towability. This year, they got rid of the carpet. We're looking at Goodyear Endurance Radial Standard now. Um, uh, they've also upgraded their optional solar package that we're going to see today to give you some extended time uh, untethered or just some superior battery tending. Um, that 200 uh, watt optional panel up there should, on good sunny conditions, be able to offset most of the demand of that 12 volt fridge for like an extended weekend off. You're going to have to be careful your power draw there. But whenever you change something, knee bone to leg bone, something else has to give. This model does have a couple little hiccups. It's got some things I really like. It's got a couple uh, points that you may not enjoy. I'll uh, try to show you the good with the bad as we go and give you a fair representation of it. And if you appreciate that, hit that subscribe button. And let's jump in there. All right, so when you first walk in the door, you turn your head left as you do in, well, most travel trailers and fifth wheels. That seems to kind of be the default arrangement. This is kind of what you're going to see right here. Like at a glance, it feels very familiar. One of the things that's nice here, there's some cool stuff you can't see. Again, there's some surprising details on these, like the standard uh, 15,000 BTU air now. They kind of followed suit with Cherokee. They said, let's just give them a big air standard. And um, over here in the bunk space, I'm always a fan of those open air ladder walls because it doesn't make the RV look so boxy, although you do have a privacy curtain. Notice though how both bunks have a window that opens. And look at the left side of the frame. You've got household USB outlets and a light for each individual bunk. And you'll also see that there's the nice blackout roller shades all over the place in this one. There's some really cool smart detail features there. And when the video first kicked in, kind of like one of the things I mentioned originally here uh, when we were outside anyway, sorry, I'm tripping over myself left, right, and center. I'm also tripping over whatever's behind me. I think the fire extinguisher. They got rid of the carpet. That was hands down the number one thing that I heard in terms of feedback across all of the uh, Heritage Glen and Hemispheres last year. Why do they still have carpet? Well, now they don't. Now the RV's six and a half foot tall inside, which means I'll have to have my head in the skylight in the shower. But what's interesting is they all, they kind of make it look and feel a little bit bigger here in the kitchen by also putting a skylight in this space. Big 12 volt DC compressor fridge standard uh, in these. I do believe they're still offering an eight cubic foot gas electric um, swap shin, by the way, which you could pair up with their solar package. Well, the solar package is independent of that, but if you wanted some decent sort of off-grid capability, you could have it there. Now, at a glance, the RV doesn't look like it has good campsite window coverage, but from the seating space, you actually have pretty good views outside there. Now, if I sit over here in the dinette, by default, you look at this and go, oh yeah, you know, the, the TV's great right here, but I don't know that I really consider this the primary daytime seating space. I think if you're going to watch TV, you're probably going to be over here on the Murphy sofa. And that looks like a 90 degree neck cranker. Give me just a minute and I'll show you where that TV actually pivots around. Now you're not giving up the storage uh, that you would have had above the kitchen right there. Remember they installed a pantry in the slide of this one behind the U-Dinette. 
So there are a couple crafty key little details right there. Now the trick is that pantry prevented them from putting uh, breeze windows on both sides of the slide, but at least they put a breeze through window wherever they could. Now an interesting little note here, this can fold down into a sleeper. If you want to, this RV could sleep anywhere from five to eight, depending on how much we're racking and stacking and going nose to toes. Um, these corner cushions, they are not part of the sleeper equation. There's actually a separate little just white colored cushion that you use to help cover that tabletop when you do fold that down into a sleeper. I like to kind of point that out because that trips some people up. Now, I kind of just had a thought here. Over here in this pantry, in this uh, floor flush slide, there's like this little walk-in space. That feels like a good spot for a couple dog dishes or something like that right there, doesn't it? I don't know. Like, uh, I've got a small dog. I could put his little bed over there, although he doesn't use that. He only uses, um, you know, our laps and our beds when he's uh, ready to, to hunker down and snooze. Any, anybody else have that thing go down? Now, uh, I'm going to flip over to wide-angle lens mode here so I can set the camera down and showcase for you how this whole Murphy bed arrangement works. This is interesting. Because it's a gas-strutted Murphy bed, it is not a folding mattress but you actually bend the mattress when you put it away the mattress does not um nose dive down into the pass-through compartment it's sort of a hybridization of uh you know the the two other primary types of murphy bed systems out there um you can see there's storage all around it it's also it's very easy to put up and down with just like you know one hand because of the gas strut and it has that little move bunk get out the way kind of lock system on it you know for when you put it away that is very cool now the one thing i'm not sure about and stay tuned in the video usually when a manufacturer makes a floor plan like this you are not able to access the uh bathroom or the uh uh the, the bed in transit on it i'll be very curious to see if this one suffers from that very common I don't know, defect, deficit, whatever you want to call it there. Now, you may have noticed, I, I didn't realize it was off camera. I didn't get you a good look at the straw, uh, storage, God bless America, drawer storage below the Murphy sofa. So I got you a separate look at that over there. And you may have noticed, again, blackout roller shades around all the windows in this thing. Now, something I haven't gotten you a good look at, um, all the way up by the headboard of the bed, actually against uh, on the front wall, there are power outlets on both sides of the bed. So if what you're looking for is to be able to run like a little, uh, like I love to have a little wireless phone charge pad next to me. That's something that I, I, I keep at home beside my bed. I keep in my little travel survival supplies. It's just really nice just to be able to reach over, set that thing down, pick it up, grab it when you need, not have to worry about, you know, reaching around in the dark and getting a scraggle of cables tied around your, your hands or your neck or whatever, you know. Um, it, it's just one of those extra little things I like. Now, um, a couple things here, being fair, I've talked about a lot of stuff I do like. Sorry, I've still got this off center. There we go. Well, anyway, that actually kind of showcases one of the things there. It doesn't have fitted sink covers, and it's only a half sink roll away drying rack for that big farm sink. I just feel like that could have been executed better. Um, there's, uh, it's just a, uh, a backsplash, not a side splash, but I swear about 99% of RVs suffer from that exact same deficiency. But a couple of really cool points right here. They, uh, they don't have centralized, um, speakers blowing you away in the RV. Anybody remember when they used to, they really boasted these surround sound systems and campers. You had to have the volume up at a level that, like, it was uncomfortable like you could never hear anything other than just the tv or if you wanted to have a conversation you had to turn the tv down to the point it didn't work but did you notice where they did not have their command panel this right here is one of those awesome little details that they nailed the first go here because they got to see other people build this floor plan and see things that maybe weren't awesome most builders who build a floor plan like this their command panel is right down here. And it is nice to be outside and reach in and open the awning, but it is not nice for the little kids to be able to reach over there and flick things like your water heater. Um, uh, when I was uh, younger, when I was knee high to a grasshopper, I was camping with my grandparents and my parents had to go to town for a little bit. So I was hanging out with grandpa and grandma at their campsite. We all used to camp together. And I flipped the red switch and the light came on and ooh, for a little boy with a vivid imagination, that was pretty cool. I was playing like rocket ship launcher in my head, you know? Well, turns out I burned out my grandfather's water heater element. So putting those switches up there by that microwave, <laughs> my grandpa would approve. But once again, like you look at this, you say, oh, it's another copy of the same floor plan. This right here is another key critical difference. It might be a make or break thing actually. 
they flip flopped the bathroom and the bunks. By putting the bathroom over on the door side, they had more space for a bigger bathroom, which means more floor space. And I thought that porcelain foot flush uh, stool was pretty darn good. I was a little bit surprised with the elbow room on the right hand side. I think if, uh, and you can twist and adjust those toilets a little bit. I think if you turn that just slightly, that would work pretty darn well uh, right there, even if you are a little bit fluffier. And again, six and a half foot tall, but they had that skylight perfectly positioned. It does not feel short in there. I never felt like I was going to be busting my head on anything standing in that shower. They really nailed this. By, they, they came up with a way to get rid of the radius shower that like almost nobody else has done. Now, over here, we got the Rhino Beetle, uh, Beetle coat hook thing and a little bit of linen storage. I like that they're actually putting a door on it, though. I'm not a big super fan of a lot of open face storage, which is really the, uh, the trend in a lot of RV bathrooms right now. Now, just finishing up the visual here, uh, again, this bathroom is nice and big and spacious, but some of it's kind of positioned in a way that from the bathroom door, I can't really get a good look at it uh, on camera. If I'm going to knock this bathroom for one thing, it's limited countertop space. It definitely has uh, a shortage of that right there. And uh, this is the view when you're getting out of the shower um, in your birthday suit, unless you're like showering in swimming trunks or something. I don't know. That seems weird. But I knew a guy in college that always did that. Um, he was he was one of those weird guys. Like he was that guy that would like uh, like swallow mid sentence for some reason. Like he'd be like, "Hey guys, I'm gonna go to McDonald's. Did you want anything?" And I'm like, "You didn't know you were about to breathe right there. You had to breathe right in the middle of a sentence." Sorry. Wow, I got way off topic here. You know what we do need to look at is the road mode function, but what I'm really curious about, I, I'm eyeballing it. I'm gonna make a prediction before we actually see this happen. I don't think you're going to be able to use the bed in road mode, but let's find out. Oh, holy crap, holy crap, it can. I did not expect that. Almost anybody who's ever built a model like this, they build it in a way that the slide out's too close to the sleeper when it's down. I did not expect that. That's awesome. Okay, moving up in here, we run into our next potential hiccup that everybody and their brother has with this floor plan, and that is accessing the rest of the RV when the slide is closed. Now, by default, you can do the Dukes of Hazard, yee-haw, butt scoop boogie, and you can put your backside on that, twist and pivot, and then hop your way over here. That's that's an option. The other thing you can do is the very careful Luke knee walker maneuver, or you can store that tabletop somewhere out of the way in transit, and that will allow you to get past the dinette, like I'm going to basically demonstrate right now. As long as you're ginger, as long as you're careful, um, you can get your way back here. You can get into the kitchen to get to the fridge, um, the uh, you know bunk space, the bathroom. So... It's not easily, obviously, travel transversible, but you can make it work. Now, something else I just kind of noticed once this thing got all closed up, it didn't really occur to me before. There was not really any lights directly above the bed area. I think, I don't think it's really going to affect the use of the RV. It does feel a little dark in here. Like, they have, they have a light right here in front of the door that I was dumb enough to literally directly stare at. And then they have one on the opposite side. Like, if they'd have put the two lights centered in the RV, but one here, one here, I think it just would have been more even lighting overall. But, again, I'm, I'm like, reaching for nitpicks here. Now, kicking things off for us outside here, let's talk towing. What are you going to need to get this sucker down the road? Well, uh, take another look at the specs right there, your holding tanks, your length weight, all that kind of stuff. Um, this one I do think is a good, uh, you know, fit for the generalized statement of half-ton towable. That statement generally means late model tow package half-tons. I think that'd be a pretty good fit for this vehicle under most circumstances. The wide stance stability axles and that 26-foot length are, are two factors really working well together there to give you a good, comfortable tow experience. I'm also going to give them some credit. They maximized the awning on this one in a fantastic way. They really couldn't have put a bigger awning on there. Uh, very nicely covers the entry door and the camp kitchen, which is uh, a, a cool little one-two punch. Now, quick note for you. This is a little uh, RV shopping pro tip. 
when you are, um, you know, shopping out there, if you get one of these with the optional solar package, kind of like Cherokee RV, it does include a factory battery. It's a simple lead acid battery, but the fact is it's there. So don't let a dealership talk you into paying more for a battery that was already, uh, you know, included from the RV. I know that not everybody watching this is necessarily purchasing exclusively from Bish's RV. So just a little courtesy tip to put out there for you. Now, the, uh, the stable steps are standard on these to kind of take the herky jerkiness out of the uh, the come and go equation notice how they've got fully tinted windows on here that's another one of the differences between the laminated sidewall salem wildwoods and the uh the stick built sidewall salem wildwoods giving you a good look here directly broadside on this thing under the patio notice beside that um camp kitchen door there's that black rectangle staring at us above the d in wildwood well, uh, that is your stovetop vent hood, and that's the kind of little detail stuff that not every single RV has. You got to pay attention to those little details. If you're cooking inside, you may not be exhausting that heat outside. But this right here is really one of the keys to making this RV work the way it does, especially with that bathroom bunk arrangement. By not burying a camp kitchen under the bunks, they were able to put the bunks again on the driver's side, which allows them to uh, you know, give you that bigger rectangular uh, shower. A lot of people say, I don't like those radius showers. This is what it took to make that happen. Be curious to know if you kind of like or dislike that. Now, if you are cooking up a storm, you do have to reach over a hot griddle to get into that fridge. I don't know that you're in and out of the fridge constantly. I don't know that that's a major problem, but that's, I don't know, maybe you are, maybe I'm not. Maybe you and I camp differently. I'm, I'm totally open to feedback on that. I don't claim to be an authority on anything. Wide stance stability axles. Uh, Goodyear Endurance radials also. That is now standard on these. They did not have those last year. That's a nice 2023 upgrade right there. Got the uh, tie down here for our four-legged furry friends. And you don't have a sink outside, but you do have a high-pressure sprayer port right there next to our TV hookups. If you want to uh, you know, be able to do a little bit of campsite cleanup, maybe uh, hose the kids down or clean up the mess made by the bubble machine. You know those big, long bubble wands anybody with a little kid you ever have this experience where you, you pull out the bubble wand and you blow some bubbles and then they say i want to do it and then you hand it to them and they immediately spill it now everybody's crying and everyone's upset for an afternoon a anyone else ever have that little experience anyway these have had a walkable roof but they didn't really have a way to get up there thankfully now they do the ladder is not included by the way that's one that i just happen to have here on the shop that i use for demo purposes like this but if you need one of those ladders they're available all over the place online just telescoping rv ladder something like that just make sure you get the appropriate size they they do come in more than one uh you know height basically um up top let's see as long as we got that ladder let's go ahead and take a look up top on the roof again fully walkable white ac shroud maybe doesn't look as cool from ground level but it does allow the air conditioner to operate with max efficiency because the condenser itself isn't fighting hot heat from the sun inside of a black shroud. And again, today we're looking at that optional 200 watt factory solar package that does have a 30 amp charge controller. So if you wanna throw another 200 watt panel up there, you probably could. Now this doesn't have any sort of factory allowance for inverters. That is one of the areas where they haven't gone quite that far yet. But you know, different brands have different features, different advantages, different drawbacks. That's why I like to showcase all these things for you. Now, one thing I haven't checked is how many sewer outlets we have. And if my eyes don't mistake me, I do believe we have a single, we do, we have two grays and a black right there, kitchen gray, bath gray, and then um, your, uh, you know, your black pole. So everything all coming out of the single stinky slinky sewer hookup station. That's, uh, that's a fantastic find right there. One other thing I want to show for you. These normally have huge front pass-throughs, and this isn't bad, but the way that they did their Murphy bed arrangement, it kind of, it's almost like a, a hybrid concept of a bendy bed and a non-bendy bed, and it sort of has half and half of the outside pass-through storage here that you would expect, um, but I don't know, it's better than zero outside pass-through storage. And by the way, Charge controller when you get the solar package located right over here. And I'm going to give them uh, awesome kudos for this. Their battery disconnect switch, it's easy to reach, but it's inside that cavity. It's up out of the way. Um, and it's it's in a place where if cargo shifts, it's not likely to like smash and crash and break that little key off or anything. That, that was some good execution. Again, this is their first time making this layout. Uh, you wouldn't know it by looking at this. There's some smart detail action here. But like I said, 
they are not the only ones making a model like this. Uh, Rockwood Flagstaff, uh, Coachman, Surveyor, uh, Alta now. Everybody and their brother makes something like this because it's a really good layout, but they all do it a little bit differently. And this is kind of their first attempt at a layout like this, so I'd love to hear from you folks. What do you think about their execution of it? Where did they nail it? Where did they fail it? And if you're curious to see what one of these things might run on a given day, check the link in the video description. Anytime we have one of these in stock in either Salem or Wildwood, you'll see it uh, showing on our website with a price published as long as there's nothing pending on it. So when you're ready, we're ready. And until next time, take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone. Bye.